Good afternoon, class. This will be our second video, still talking about section 12.1, um, kind of our intro to vectors, so building this foundational knowledge. So, next idea we want to get is the idea of vectors can be collinear. So, collinear just means that they, the vector lies in a straight line. All our points will lie in a straight line. So, let's take a look at this example. So, let's show that the points A, B, and C with position vectors given are respectively collinear. Um, so let's begin as writing these as some sort of a position vector. So a position vector would be with in terms of O. So if I start out with some point here, I'll call that O. And I want to go to some point over here, I'll call that B. And then I have some point over here. I'm not worried about where these are at, just kind of giving us a representation. And so if I wanted to say from A to B, if I wanted to identify this vector from A to B, well, in order to do that, remember, I have to go from A to O, and then O to B would be another way that I can go. So I'm going to begin as writing these as our position vector. So my vector AB, I'm going to write as I OB, and then subtract O A. Because remember, if I went A O, if my vector is going that way, the reverse of it is going to take me O A. All right, so my vector for O B, I can write this, is going to be given by the second piece here. So it's going to equal negative 2i plus 3j minus k. All right, and then remember, I want to subtract these. And then my position vector OA is just going to be this one up here. So it will be I minus 2J plus 3K. And now I can simplify this down by combining my like terms. Well, I have an I in each piece. So I'm going to have negative 2 subtract 1 multiplied by i, just combining those together, and then I'm going to add all of these pieces together. So I'm going to have 3, subtract a negative, so plus 2j, and then add on my final piece, so be a negative 1, subtract a positive 3, so subtract 3k. Now I can further simplify this down to become negative 2 subtract 1 will give me my negative 3i plus 5j minus 4k. So my position, my vector ab is going to be represented by negative 3i plus 5j minus 4k. So now I want to see about my vector ac. And so I could find this from my vector OC minus OA. So again, if I thought of this same figure that I have up here on the left and just replace the B with a C, I'm going to have that same idea where to get from A to C, I need to go OC subtract OA. So let's do this one. So again, OC is going to be represented by this third piece that I have there. So I'll have 4i minus 7j plus 7k. And then I'm subtracting my OA, which would be the same as above. So i minus 2j plus 3k. And when I combine these, I'm going to get all my i's together. So I'm going to have 4 subtract 1 i plus a negative 7. Subtracting a negative 2 would be adding 2 j. And then my k, 7 subtract 3 k. And when I combine that together, I will have... 3i minus 5j plus 4k. Alright, so now 
we should be able to recognize, well, up here I have a negative 3i, and now I have a positive 3i. Positive 5j, negative 5j, negative 4k, positive 4k. So I can say then that my vector AB is going to be equal to the negative of my vector AC. So in a sense, my AC is the negative of it. So it might help to think of it in 3D as well. So if I had some point, I'm going to start out right here, and I'm going to call this my point A. Okay, so from A to B, I had to go a negative 3. So I'm going to go over here, negative 3, up 5J, so up 5, and then you could think of it as going into the page, a negative 4, and so my vector is going to look something like this. So that's to get to B. Well then for AC, I'm going to start out here again at this A. Now I'm going to go positive 3, down 5, to get here to my position C. And this is a positive 4K, so you can think of it coming out of the page 4. And so that's going to continue down like that to look like C. So that would be AB equaling a negative AC. Well, you can see now that I form a straight line from B to C. So if I form a straight line, then it is indeed collinear, which we were trying to get to. Now we can look at the distance between two points in space. And distance, we're going to use our distance formula. So they give us this diagram here on the right. and says if A is represented by vectors x1, or I'm sorry, position x1, y1, z1, and then A, which again, that's that boldface A, which is the same as our vector AB, is going to be equal to OA, so my distance from O to A, and I can represent it using my i, j, and k terms. And then the same thing with B is x2, y2, z2. My vector B is going to be represented in terms of i, j, and k there as well. So if I wanted to find my vector AB, it's going to be AO plus OB. And then I can simplify that down to be OB subtract OA. And then again, they have it in boldface. Same thing, B minus A. Well, now I'm subtracting each of these individual terms. So my distance, using the distance formula, I'm going to take the square root of those terms squared. So let's do an example of this. I think it'll make a little more sense. So find the vector AB from point A is negative 1, 5, 1, B is 4, 5, negative 1, then determine the distance between the two points. So let's first off, let's find our OA. So we have some position vector that we need to find is OA, and that's represented by negative 1, so I could just say negative I plus 5J plus K. And then my vector OB is going to be represented by 4i plus 5j minus k. Alright, so now my vector AB is going to be found from that OB, my vector OB, subtract my vector OA. And so now I can just fill in my pieces that I need. So OB is 4i plus 5j minus k. Again, I'm subtracting negative i plus 5j plus k. Combining my terms together, of 4, subtracting a negative 1, so 4 plus 1 for my i. 5 subtracting 5, well that's going to give me a 0, j, and then negative k subtract k, and that's going to be negative 1 subtracting 1. So I'm going to have negative 1 subtracting 1 k. So when I combine all these together, I'm going to have 5i plus 0j minus 2k. 
All right, so now my distance formula, or again, that's this, put it between halves of values, so that's the length, that's my magnitude, is going to be found from square root of 5 squared plus 0 squared, still plus, and then this is my negative 2 squared. So when I do this, I'm going to have 25 plus 4. So I'll do that becomes square root of 29, which is approximately 5.39. Is going to be my distance for that vector AB from my given A and B. All right, so the final thing we're going to talk about are called unit vectors. So a unit vector is a vector of length 1 in a given direction. Okay, so that one's, that was pretty straightforward, what that's going to be representative of. So the first thing we need to do when dealing with unit vectors is find the length of the vector A. So find the length of vector A. Again, this should be a bold face A, so I'm going to write A with a line under it to understand it's bold face A, which is the same as saying what well, looks like my absolute value bars of A, but again, that is my length, that's my magnitude. And then secondly, I want to multiply my vector, so multiply my vector A by 1 over the magnitude of A. Alright, so the vector will be in the same directions since it's just a scalar multiple of this A bar and one unit long since the length of the original is being multiplied by 1 over the length. So let's take a look here. So formally this can be re represented by a vector of length 1 in the direction of A Again, you can think of these as being our vector AB with the bar over it, but that's also represented just as that bold face A, is found by using the formula of A over the length of A. Okay? So now we can use this method to also find the length of any vector. Uh, let's say we have some vector length K in the direction of our bold face A. So first we have to find the unit vector, which we've done above, and then just simply multiply that by k. So formally we can write this as a vector of length k in the direction of a is found by using the formula that is k multiplied by our unit vector of a over the length of a. So let's do an example. So find the unit vector in the same direction as the vector 3i plus 4j. So we're finding that unit vector. So we're trying to find our a over our magnitude of A. Okay, so first off we need to find the magnitude of A. So our first step for part A, say the first step for part A is to find our magnitude for A and that's the same as saying our magnitude for our vector AB which if you recall is A squared plus B squared and so for this one, it's just going to be the square root of 3 squared plus 4 squared, which is the square root of 25, which is 5. Okay, so that is going to be our denominator. So we have A, you can think of 1 over our magnitude of A multiplied by A. Well, this up here was our A. So I have 1 fifth multiplied by 3i plus 4j. And so we can write this now as 3 fifths i plus 4 fifths j. So therefore, the vector of length 1 will be represented by 3 fifths i plus 4 fifths j. So let's take a look at part b. 
So if I want to look at part B, it says find a vector of length 10 in the same direction as a vector from 3, negative 1. So now of length 10, so that's our k. So our k is going to be length 10. Okay. So again, we need to find out what we're working with. Well, we know that our magnitude of a is going to be represented by root 10. Okay, and we can figure that by doing our 3 squared plus negative 1 squared. Square root of all that is square root of 10 because we have, so that's where this came from. So I know the magnitude is going to be square root of 10. So again, we have now our constant k, which is 10, multiplied by our 1 over our, our magnitude of a, which is square root of 10, multiplied by our vector, which is 3, negative 1. So I can rewrite this as 10 over root 10, 3, negative 1. All right. Now this is an important piece. When I have this negative 10, we go back to the idea of rationalizing our denominator. So in order to rationalize our denominator, I have to multiply by that denominator. So 10 times root 10 over root 10, root 10. And again, this is 3, negative 1 still. Well, that becomes 10 root 10 over 10. So my 10s will all cancel out. And so I'm left with just root 10 multiplied by my vector 3, negative 1. So there'll be a couple questions to answer at the end of this video. Come to class with any additional questions, and we will get started on the classwork.